163 years ago, one of the most famous people in the United States became the first ever Republican presidential nominee and has since been largely forgotten. But a new book looks at the life of John and Jesse Fremont and how they mapped the West, invented celebrity, and helped cause the Civil War. Author Steve Inskeep joins me now to talk about this fascinating couple. He is a CBS News contributor and host of NPR's Morning Edition. Steve, welcome. So great to have you here. And, and you know, congratulations on this book. It's a fascinating read. How did you first learn about Jesse and John Fremont? I had read about the Fremont since I was a kid when I read books about the Old West, but as a writer, as an adult, when I look into the westward expansion of the United States, their names come up. They were super famous in their time, much less famous now, but John C. Fremont was an explorer of the Old West who didn't actually discover that much that was new, but it's a very modern story because what he did was come home and write best-selling accounts of his adventures. He was a genius at publicity for his expeditions and for himself. And his wife, Jessie, was his secretary, editor, sometimes co-author or ghostwriter, and also his political advisor, the daughter of a senator, and a huge part of his story and his fame. I want to read something from uh, from your book. You say they, they pioneered a modern path to celebrity and then later on in the same paragraph, linking their names not to one but to three great national movements, westward settlement, which you just mentioned, women's rights and opposition to slavery. How were they able to sort of put their finger on the pulse, if you will, of those three very, very important movements? It's an amazing story. Their timing was great. Their ambition was powerful. And they, through their political connections, because Jesse, again, was the daughter of a very powerful senator, began getting swept into the anti-slavery movement, which they hadn't really been part of. But there was a brand new party that was started in the 1850s, the Republican Party. Its main purpose was to limit the expansion of slavery. And they were looking for some famous person, some celebrity, to be their first presidential candidate candidate and settled on John C. Fremont. And so he became a symbol of the anti-slavery cause. His wife got involved for a number of reasons, but one of them being that women in that time, although they couldn't vote, they weren't supposed to be involved in politics, they were allowed to take part in what were called benevolent causes, and slavery counted. So a lot of women were involved in the anti-slavery movement. And this brand-new Republican Party captured a lot of their energy and made Jesse their symbol. And so she became part of the presidential campaign in a way that no woman ever had, in a very public way. People cheered her name rallies. Women showed up at these rallies, even though they could not vote. And Jesse was also, by the way, attacked as a kind of radical feminist, not in those words, since they weren't used at the time, but those were the kinds of attacks against her, as she became a very prominent part of her husband's campaign. It was almost like a husband and wife were running for president. Well, you know what? Reading about her, I was sort of fascinated by her life and how, as a child, she was sort of the apple of her father's eye, and before she grew into adolescence, she, she was very much treated almost like a son and given sort of all the privileges of a boy in that era. Then once she hit womanhood, you know, things sort of started to change because she was of her era, of course. But I yeah. think in today's world, Jesse would have been the uh, presidential candidate. I think that's entirely possible, and it's great that we're talking about Jesse Fremont on this day when The New York Times endorsed not one but two women yep. for the Democratic nomination for president. Uh, odd choice, and as Ed O'Keefe mentioned earlier, we don't know how much effect it will have, but it underlines what a much larger role women play and an explicit role that women play in our politics. I should mention that in the 1800s, a lot of women were influential behind the scenes. Yeah. But Jessie Fremont was a much more modern figure because she was up front, the way that women can be today. Right. So walk us through, if you will, the Fremont's political life as it related to the creation of the Republican Party and then the start of the Civil War. Uh, yeah, that's an incredible story, because I mentioned that John Fremont explored the American West. He also added to it, because in the winter of 1845-46, 
This guy rode with about 60 gunmen into Mexican-controlled California. This is a U.S. Army officer going into the territory of another country without permission, a kind of illegal immigrant, if you will. And he began the complicated process of conquering California for the United States. He became known as the conqueror of California. It was part of his giant reputation. But the capture of all that land, and it was actually uh, what became several states, part or all of several states, created a challenge for the country, because America was divided between northern states and southern states, states that had abolished slavery and states that still allowed and, in fact, embraced slavery. And there was a question as to whether the newly captured territory would become slave or free. It was extraordinarily divisive. And it became more so, in a way, because of the creation of the Republican Party. The North had grown in population. There was a huge demographic change in the country. The North was becoming much more populous, which in a democracy means much more powerful. And some Northerners began to realize they could elect a president with Northern votes alone, mm -hmm. which meant they wouldn't have to appeal for Southern votes, which meant they could take a stand against slavery. And that's what this new Republican Party did. And when they thought about a candidate to enlist, to become the face of their cause, they picked the guy who was seen as the conqueror of the very territory they were arguing about. Right. I, I also want to put it, you, you point out that, that making California a state really just changed entirely, changed the game for the United States. Suddenly, this was a country that would be a world power, right, from, yeah. from coast to coast. Yeah, if we think about the diversity of America, if we think about the modern American economy, this was a country that was essentially founded by Europeans, taking Indian land, but along the Atlantic coast and facing Europe. The capture of California and also the, the uh, acquisition of Oregon, which Fremont had something to do with, that gave the United States a Pacific coast. It also made the United States part of Latin America, because right. our country took over part of Latin America and the people in it. Yeah. It was done to establish trade routes with China and India that are now central to the American economy. Uh, you also point out that, you know, the country was was so divided then between, you know, slave states and, and, and states who wanted to abolish it that it sort of echoes in some ways the divides that we're seeing in modern American political life, correct? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mentioned the demographic change. One of the things that we're seeing today, the backdrop of all the news you're discussing elsewhere on this program, is the demographic change in America. Certain groups, people of color, immigrants, we could name various groups, are growing in population more rapidly than other people. And they tend to vote in greater numbers at this time for one political party. And that can be destabilizing. There are a lot of Republicans who see this as a threat. This is the backdrop to President Trump saying during his election campaign in 2016 to his supporters, this is your last chance to win, your last chance for our side to win. That creates an extremely tense form of politics. You have people fearing not just that they're going to lose an election, but that they could lose forever. And that was extremely destabilizing in the 1850s. This was the run-up to the American Civil War. Now, we shouldn't assume we're on our way to a civil war now, but we can understand why there's so much tension. And there are also Democrats today who are fearful of being shut out of power forever because of a president they see as authoritarian. So important to see the echoes of history in modern life. Steve Inskeep, yeah. thank you so much for telling us about this one in particular. Thank you. Thank you. Delighted to do it.